Princess Shamsa, a member of the Emirati royal family, took a Black Range Rover, drove it to the edge of her father Sheikh Mohammed's $130 million British estate, abandoned the car and fled for freedom in August 2000. Shamsa, despite living a life of unparalleled luxury and wealth, was desperate to escape the confines of her life when she was only 18 years old. So keep watching till the end and we'll tell you everything about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to her channel. Before we begin about who is Dubai's missing Princess Shamsa and what happened to her, in this video, please subscribe to her channel and click the bell icon to ensure that you never miss another video from us. Let's get this started. According to reports, about two months after her escape, Shamsa was allegedly kidnapped from the street in Cambridge, grabbed kicking and screaming and flown back to the UAE. If this happened, as she claims, it was a well-executed, well-planned operation in that they got her out before anyone knew about it, a source told The Guardian. In March 2001, a woman claiming to be Shamsa contacted Cambridge police, detailing her alleged abduction. However, the investigation quickly stalled. Now, a woman who has spent time with the Emirati royal family has painted a deeply troubling portrait of what Shams's life has allegedly been like for the last 19 years, having personally come into contact with her during her time in Dubai. Shamsa, she claims, has been tortured, imprisoned and drugged for nearly two decades, and she has allegedly attempted suicide three times. Tina Joahainen moved to the Gulf State in 2001 and first met the country's ruling family in 2010 when she was hired to teach capoeira to Shams' sister, Princess Latifa. Tina and Latifa became close friends over the years and they later began skydiving together. Slowly, Latifa began to tell Finnish-born Tina about her own horrifying treatment at the hands of her family, that she had spent more than three years in jail and had allegedly been beaten after attempting to flee Dubai in 2002 when she was 16 years old. Tina attempted to assist Latifa in escaping for the second time in March of 2018. The two women drove across the border to Oman, then insured a 40-kilometer jet ski, an inflatable boat ride before meeting former French Navy officer Hervé Jobbert aboard his yacht in international waters. The trio intended to sail to Goa, for Mira Latifa would travel to the United States. Instead, commandos from the Indian and Emirati Armed Forces boarded the boat and seized them. Tina was released from Dubai jail after two weeks and has been working tirelessly to bring global attention to her friend's plight ever since, launching the Free Latifa movement. In December 2018, the Emirati royal family released photos of Latifa with former UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Mary Robinson in an attempt to prove that she was fine. Instead, the images of her appearing dazed heightened international concern for her. However, her sister's fate has largely remained unknown, that is, until now. Tina, speaking exclusively to news.com.au, revealed a disturbing insight into Shamsa's fate. Shamsa was kidnapped in the United Kingdom in 2000. She was forcibly returned to the UAE in the prison for eight years, Tina claims. Tina claims Latifa told her Shamsa was beaten on the feet with wooden canes in jail. Shamsa was released from prison in 2008 but was in prison again two years later after attempting to contact the British media and Cambridge police, who had briefly investigated her alleged kidnapping in 2001. This time, Tina says she was locked up in a room in her mother's house, where she was kept drugged up. Tina saw Shamsa twice during her time in Dubai. The first time I met Shamsa was at the royal family's private sporting complex in 2011. She appeared disoriented and dissatisfied. She appeared uncomfortable and sad, and she was waiting for a PT, Tina says. She appeared very ill. When Tina ran into Shamsa again five years later, the prince's appearance had changed dramatically. The second time I saw her was at another sister's wedding in 2016. Shamsa had lost so much weight that she was unrecognizable. She looked anorexic and extremely skinny, and Latifa told me that she had actually stopped eating. Tina says she's like a zombie. Latifa had told Tina that her sister had attempted suicide three times. She couldn't take it anymore, Tina says. Latifa describes the treatment of Shamsa and other female members of the family, as well as her own torture, in a video shot before she fled Dubai in 2018 and released after her capture. Basically, one guy was holding me while the other guy was beating me, and they did it repeatedly, Latifa explains. The next time I was tortured, it was for five hours, and I was dragged from my bed, driven to another location in the palace and tortured. Tina claims that both sisters are still being held against their will. Sheikh Mohammed's junior wife will face off against him in the UK High Court this week as the couple fights for custody for their two young children. According to reports, Haya fled Dubai earlier this year after discovering the truth about her autocratic husband's treatment of Shamsa and Latifa. 
Given that the Sheik's standing as a father will almost certainly be called into question in court, there's a good chance that new information about Shamsa and Latifa will emerge. I believe that after being married to Sheikh Mohammed for over 15 years, Princess Haya has finally opened her eyes and realized what kind of person he is. She had to want to protect herself and her children, Tina says. She's now hoping that Haya's high-profile case will help secure Shamsa and Latifa's freedom. I would not have spent the last 16 months campaigning for Latifa's freedom if I didn't believe it would one day become a reality. I wish the same for Shamsa, and with Princess Haya's upcoming hearing, Latifa and Shamsa's chances have greatly improved. On February 20, 2022, the UN tweeted a photo of their human rights chief meeting with Latifa. As a photo of Princess Latifa meeting the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights is released, she says she's living as she wishes. The image and statement come almost exactly one year after she claimed in videos that her family was holding her hostage in Dubai. Since the release of her video testimony, this is the first photo of Princess Latifa, the daughter of Dubai's billionaire ruler, with an official rather than friends or family. It shows a well-dressed Latifa smiling alongside Michelle Bachelet, the UN's human rights chief in Paris. Princess Latifa's spokesperson has issued a statement to Sky News. According to the statement, following persistent media speculation about her, Sheikha Latifa would like to state that she had a lengthy, positive, and private meeting with the High Commissioner in Paris to assert her right to her private life. Latifa would like to make it clear that she's living her life as she wishes, traveling as she wishes, is perfectly healthy, and would like the media to allow her to live in peace. Ms. Bachelet met Dubai's Sheikha Latifa at her request in Paris, according to a tweet from the UN Human Rights Twitter account that posted the image. The High Commissioner and Latifa met in private after being introduced by Latifa's legal advisor. Latifa informed the High Commissioner that she was fine and requested that her privacy be respected. Despite the fact that the image was shared on Friday, a UN spokesperson told Sky that the meeting took place in late November of last year. This is supported by what is visible in the photograph. Yellow lights on the trees and under the awning appear to be visible in the background of the photograph, implying that it was taken before or during the Christmas season. Similar lights can be seen in the background of this November 2017 photo of the area. These yellow lights do not appear to be on display all year, as they are missing from this April 2017 photo. Videos on YouTube titled or streamed in February of this year appear to show that the trees surrounding the department store visible in the photo no longer have lights on. When asked when the photo was taken, the Sheikh's lawyers declined to comment. The UN spokesperson continued, the meeting had been requested by Latifa. As you may recall, there were serious concerns about her situation earlier this year, and we publicly demanded proof of life. Of course, her one-on-one -on -one meeting with the High Commissioner suffices. Secret video messages passed to Sky News were published on February 17 last year. The princes claimed to them that their father was holding her hostage. Following the release of the videos, the UN and world leaders expressed concern for the princess. In May 2021, a photo of Princess Latifa in public was shared on social media for the first time since her videos were released. More photos were shared on social media in the months that followed. And that's all we have for now. Thank you for stopping by to watch the video. If you liked it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel in the future for more interesting and up-to-date news videos. We'll see you in the next video.